Mr. Johnson, I'm student Dr. Ibe. How are you doing? Mr. Johnson? Mr. Johnson? Mr. Johnson? We do have a call. Good job. Good job. Good job. That was cool. That was fun. Simulation is a real life scenario, but done in a controlled environment. We provide medical simulations that will mimic an actual case of a patient here to provide the contents for the students. In our patient simulator rooms, we can replicate any medical situation. The simulators can have droopy eyes, strokes, they can seize, they can become unconscious, they breathe, they hear, can you hear us? they talk, what? What's going on? they have heart sounds, bowel sounds, lung sounds, just like a real human being would. I got him on two liters of oxygen, uh, and I'm going to take his fluids. So uh, he has a history of diabetes and high blood pressure. Can we get a finger stick? Can we get an EKG? Uh, finger stick 63. One of the great things about simulation is that it's realistic, and students can increase not just their competence, but their confidence. Okay, his oxygen is a whole lot better now. 93 heart rate is coming back up. At they can feel confident that they're going to be safe in tasks that they take on with real patients. He's perking up. He remembers he's in the hospital, so it's a good job. The rooms that are set up in this simulation center, they're very, very similar to the rest of the room set up in the family medicine rotation. I feel like the simulation center mentally prepared me because it's the same kind of flow, the same way you would be asking questions, the same way you'd be approaching patients, going into a room, how to handle yourself. That's all very similar to how you would be doing in a real life setting on rotations. Good job, everybody. Okay, we'll call it there. It's the end of simulation. In a typical mannequin-based simulation, uh, we typically break our groups down into about four students. That's the ideal size. Then we bring them and put them through the simulation. The simulation itself can range anywhere from five minutes to probably no more than 15 minutes. When a student's engaged in that environment, um, you know, us from a faculty perspective, we try to stay hands off. Sometimes, um, you know, us as faculty will be embedded in the room and we'll be there to play a supporting role if things get um, hairy. And then also there's the person behind the scenes controlling the, the mannequin from a, a control space. You need to get deeper. After the scenario is done, we bring out the entire group, and this is the most important part of a, uh, of a mannequin-based simulation. It's the debriefing. So uh, what were some of your thoughts in that room as you were in that encounter? We had a great team dynamic. Everyone was doing CPR. I know we struggled a little just staying on CPR at all times. I know you guys wanted to like treat the MI just off a rhythm strip. You, you shouldn't do that. So the debriefings are super helpful because we get to see what we did wrong and also how to improve for next time. And then we make sure that whatever we did do correctly can be reinforced or brought up again next time. One by one. Because there's always going to be a next time. When you get into the hospital system, it's not just one doctor taking care of that patient. It'll be a team of doctors. One of the values of simulation is the fact that although a student must master the various skills, they get the pass of not having to deal with the stress of a real life. Learning how to put in an IV or draw blood, nobody wants to actually inflict pain on anybody. So I think that it provides for a more fruitful and learning experience for them. When you're inserting in, hold from like the base. Also significant to the training that happens here in the center is our procedural skills lab, uh, where we have a longitudinal procedures curriculum. Uh, so we teach uh, roughly a dozen skills over the course of the medical training starting as early as the first year. Because if we do bevel down, it won't penetrate the skin as well and it'll drag, right? And that's something that we start with on the task trainers or the simulated body parts and ideally we progress them up to practicing on real humans. We integrate simulation and technology throughout our four years of the curriculum and that starts in first year. Some of the hardest things when we are teaching ultrasound is being able to understand the, the two dimensions that we work with. We're really proud we have point of care ultrasound as part of our curriculum, which is fairly unusual in medical schools. Here at Rowan, um, they really went the extra mile 
And so for our students to be able to begin to learn how to use that technology starting in their first year is really exciting and they absolutely love it. But these dots along here correspond with the depth. The technology is great and our instructor is phenomenal. We just couldn't ask for better. And you can actually look inside the organs if you want to. That is insane. <laughs> when you ask about AR reality or augmented reality in training, it's a whole different aspect of simulation. If you're able to go inside the body, you're able to immerse yourself even more. Now you're seeing like the top of the heart here. Do you see what I'm seeing also? No, what I'm, what I'm seeing is like, I, I'm still seeing the full uh, rib cage. They're treating the patient on the inside because they're able to look inside the body, see the organs, see where it's bleeding, see what's happening, so forth like that. And that makes the, the students more proficient doctors of the future. There, so you can see the ultrasound at the same time. Equally as important to simulation up here in the center is our standardized patient programs. Hi, how's it going? I'm, I'm all right. I'm out of the suit. Do I have your name? We take actors and we give them scripts of defined medical illnesses. So they'll have a storyline to follow. And what we do is we have them engage with students, kind of like a simulated doctor's office. And within a defined time frame, they need to interview, do a physical examination on the patient, and come up with a diagnosis and a treatment plan and then be able to document their findings. Could you let me know if you have any tenderness as a palpating? The Simulation Center falls under the Office of Assessment, and with that alignment comes the key responsibility of making sure our students and their skills are where they need to be. Um, so we are constantly not only teaching new skills and pushing their knowledge forward, but we're also making sure that their skills match up with where we think they should be at their level of learning. Standardized patient training is very nerve-wracking, but it does help prepare you really well for real life experiences. And it's really helpful to get feedback on that interaction, like that social and emotional and empathetic interaction as well, because that's a big part of patient care. Overall, I think I actually have been pretty well prepared and in an environment that is helpful for learning, um, fostering learning, with all the interaction we get with our professors. I know for sure that with our emphasis on humanism and what we're taught in labs and stuff, it has prepared me for the real world. All the things you learn in the classroom are important and they kind of help you have your medical understanding, but being able to like, talk to patients and kind of go through the interview, I think is the most important step. I think really being able to have a firm grasp of the foundations of interacting with patients, the types of questions you should be asking, the types of questions you should be thinking about, I think has been the most important part of my first two years preclinical medical education. The universal theme or the constant that needs to be taught to all of the students is how to relate to the patient. I think this never changes. You know, there are no redos in real life. When you're telling somebody something difficult, when you're asking probing questions, when you're dealing with a patient under stress, you want to do it right the first time or as right as you can get it. So I think that human interaction is very important and I think for that purpose, the technology that we use here has been a huge gift to medical education.